Tara. Um, yeah, I, I put the question just in the context of um, th there's a huge amount of work done at local authority level, as you know, and our planning services are very professional and they offer very um, professional uh, services to everybody who engages with them, uh, whether that's through the development plan process. Um, development plans are getting more and more complex and um, we need to in incorporate a lot of environmental law, climate law. Uh, it's becoming a, a much more complex process. Uh, the consent process is becoming more and more uh, complex for them as well, um, especially with the LSRD bill. And whereas on Borbeth and Alla would have led it under the strategic housing development process, that will now fall to local authorities to carry out those pre-planning consultations. And uh, we recently had a committee session on that, and we did hear concerns about resources available to local authorities and the pressures they would put under to meet those uh, tight timelines that are in the LSR. D bill. So I would just be concerned about that. Also about enforcement. Enforcement has always been the weakest part of planning, I think, and to ensure that uh, enforcement is, is well resourced. Minister. Thank you, uh, Last Count Carla, and I would concur with the Deputy. It is a very important area to ensure that we maximise our resources and indeed our skill set within the local authority sector. And that's one thing I see as I go around the 31 local authority ne network, how important it is to have the right skills in the right places. Uh, in connection with your issues in terms of bringing the two-stage process back to the local authority on the ground and decisions made locally, we will obviously uh, consult with the local authority network to ensure that resources are there to manage that. And also the huge issue of digitalization of our planning system uh, to be finalized and finished by quarter two of 2022 with Tipperary and Galway County Council uh, in quarter four this year. And that will be you know, a single process for your submissions, for your applications, for your fee structure and for your appeals. And that will obviously give strength into the planning process and simplify it, which I think it is very important to bring the citizen right to the heart of planning in their community. And these measures will assist in doing that. And obviously with the Marine Bill, that will ensure through MARA a very strong, robust regulatory approach as well. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And um, it's reassuring to hear that, that the e-planning system is progressing so well because I think that will bring a lot of efficiencies to the, to the entire planning system and cut down on those masses of paperwork that are involved in a, in a planning application. So, that, so that's a positive move. And I agree with you as well about the, um, just that range of services that are required now in planning. And I would talk about things like county architects, biodiversity officers. We see in active travel, how that will tie into as well our town centre first policies, the, the compulsory purchase order scheme now that we're going to bring in under housing for all, it will put those um, continued pressures on our local authorities. It's where a lot of the actions that, that we, policy we create here, it's where we see a lot of that action and that interaction between communities. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're uh, I've, I've met with the chief executives and are aware of those uh, resource issues and are working on it. Gormahgut, last count, Corla. Minister, thank you. Oh. We also need to take into account what, uh, and we all accept the necessity of the uh, NBP rollout, and that NBI are saying if this is to be accelerated, that they will have an absolute requirement for resource allocation as regards particularly planning permissions um, and road opening licenses. And they're talking about obviously that's planners and engineers, and that they will need that sort of resource to be guaranteed. And that's even with the streamlining that has occurred with Section 254 guidelines. I think we also need to take into account that sometimes we have the, the <coughs> local development plan going on at the tail end in County Louth at the minute and we have an element of separation between the OPR and the local authority planners and even the officials at department level. I think that needs to be streamlined and we have to finally have a real conversation on uh, what we can provide for rural communities Drum to provide Drum sustainable Drum rural communities Drum and housing for those that live in those areas. Minister to conclude. Thank you, Last Count Corla. And just in response to Deputy Matthews, absolutely, I think it's so important to see the value of the skill set uh, of those uh, people who are delivering services to the local authority. It was recently in Tipperary County Council where the architect, the county architect, Dear Leem, took me through a number of developments. And I could see firsthand his input, his imprint, how he changed developments to make them a lot more sustainable 
and a lot more suitable for the citizens in the area. So I think it's absolutely important. That's one thing through you know, our post-recessionary period that we lost a lot of skills out of our local authorities and we really have to drive those back. So in terms of the planning system, uh, as you referenced to the local government management agency is overseeing uh, that process. Uh, just in connection uh, with the other, and our towns first, we're going to have proposals in November through Cabinet, so that's progressing well. In relation um, to the other matters in terms of rural planning, we obviously are currently updating the rural planning guidelines, and I think we have to have a robust mechanism to ensure that through our towns centre first, that you know, we have strong options for people to reside in our towns and villages right across the country, and you also acknowledge and understand the demand for rural housing on the other side of the coin.